Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Public Sector Quarterly Performance Review webcast, highlighting the results from our recent Public Sector IT Services Benchmark. My name is Allison Crawford, and I will be your host for today's session. Over the past few quarters, we've engaged with our readers to bring deeper clarity into the state of the professional services market. We've had good questions and discussions as a result of these events, and we're excited to continue to connect with you as the services practice grows. In the next 30 minutes, Senior Analyst John Coffis and Analyst Sebastian Lagana will delve into the trends driving the results featured in this quarter's benchmark, followed by a Q&A of these trends and how they will affect you. Before we get started, there's a few action items I'd like to cover with you. First, we will be recording today's session and posting it on our YouTube site, TBRI channel. We encourage you to visit this channel to watch this presentation or any of the others that we've posted. Second, we'd like to hear your opinions and thoughts on the materials we're presenting. Please send any questions or comments to the Q&A or chat function. John and Sebastian will address them at the end of the presentation. Or if you'd like to set up a uh, client inquiry for more detailed discussion, please reach out directly to them at the end of the webinar to set up the discussion. Third, we'll send out the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the webinar. You can also find the slides as well as other thought leadership pieces, webinar decks, and commentaries on SlideShare at www.slideshare.net backslash TBR underscore market underscore insight. And we'll be sharing all these social media links with you at the end of the presentation. With that, let me introduce John Costas, Senior Analyst and Public Sector Practice Manager, and Analyst Sebastian Lagana, Lead Author on the Public Sector Company Reports and Benchmark. John has been analyzing the market for the past 10 years and is TBR's resident expert in the government sector. Sebastian has spent the past 18 months immersed in the strategies of the government vendors to uncover patterns and trends unavailable anywhere else. John and Sebastian's research has been critical in the planning of black hat strategies for several of our clients, and their insight into the performance of the government vendors has enabled several of our clients to identify new opportunities and revenue streams. And with that, let me hand this over to John and Sebastian. Thank you, Allison. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Technology Business Research's Public Sector IT Services Benchmark Review. My name is John Costas, Senior Analyst and Manager of the Public Sector IT Services Practice here at TBR, and I will be the presenter for today's session. I've been an analyst with TBR since 2001 and have directed the Public Sector IT Services Practice since 2008. Joining me today is Sebastian Lagana, Lead Public Sector Analyst at TBR. Sebastian has been with TBR since 2011 and follows a number of the key companies in the public sector IT services space, including Northrop Grumman, ACI, Booz Allen Hamilton, and L3 Communications. TBR's focus within the public sector IT services market is to provide company-centric research to accelerate our customer success. The information we will be reviewing today comes directly from TBR's Public Sector IT Services Vendor Benchmark Report for the fourth calendar quarter of 2012, or as I will refer to throughout the presentation today, 4Q12. This detailed report includes information on vendor strategies, strategic actions, and key developments during the quarter, alliance and acquisition activity, and overall fiscal and business line performance. The information our public sector IT services team delivers is invaluable to any vendor looking to expand their footprint or compete more effectively in the public sector IT services market. We're excited to present the findings from our most recent benchmark study, and we look forward to receiving your feedback and responding to your questions about the information we will present today. Before I begin, I'd like to provide some background information for the audience regarding our research approach and methodology. The public sector practice at TBR follows on an ongoing basis 20 vendors. Of these 20, we publish quarterly and semi-annual reports on 16 companies. To break that down, we report on nine quote-unquote government-centric firms, that is companies whose primary customers are government or other non-commercial entities. We also track the public sector activities of seven leading IT services companies who, while operating predominantly in the commercial sector, have a large enough play in the public sector to warrant coverage by TBR. And finally, we, inclu we include quantitative and qualitative analysis of four additional government-centric firms in the quarterly benchmark report, but we do not publish syndicated reports on these firms as yet. As these vendors are also leading government IT services contractors, TBR has included them to provide a broader view and cross-section of the public sector market and the market forces impacting the government-centric IT services firms. So I'd like to begin with a summary of the key takeaways from our public sector IT services uh, benchmark research from the fourth calendar quarter of 2012. 
The first key finding that we will discuss today relates to the conditions in the public sector IT services market environment during the last calendar quarter of 2012 and how the market environment impacted companies' fiscal performance. Essentially, 2012 ended much the way it began for the firms providing IT services to the public sector as continued turmoil in the federal budget process was exacerbated by the threat of sequestration, generating an IT spending environment that was beset by unparalleled levels of uncertainty. This compelled federal IT decision makers to delay or even cancel outlays on new IT projects and programs, keeping top line growth rates solidly negative for most firms in our most recent public sector IT services benchmark study. Let me take a moment to orient the audience to the graphic on this slide. The blue line in the graph represents the average total year-to-year -year growth for the calendar 4Q12 quarter for all of the 20 firms in the public sector IT services benchmark study. The red line represents the average organic year-to-year -year growth, revenue growth rate for the 20 firms in the benchmark study as well. Both averages are weighted to account for the size of each benchmark firm's respective revenue base in the public sector. We believe there are three key takeaways from this illustration. First, most of the vendors in TBR's public sector IT services benchmark study continue to see their top line sales contract in 4Q12. In fact, 16 of the 20 firms in our benchmark study suffered falling sales during the last calendar quarter of 2012. 12 of the 13 government-centric IT services firms in the study saw their top line decline, while four of their, four of seven of their commercially-centric counterparts also endured sales contraction. Secondly, while we noted a slight uptick in the pace of average year-to-year -year revenue growth in 4Q12, due to the improved performance of a handful of vendors that we will call out in more detail later in this presentation, as well as some moderation in the pace of revenue contractions across the 20 firms that we follow, we caution that we do not see this as being an inflection point from which a broad market turnaround will develop in 2013. And this leads me to the third key takeaway from this illustration, which is the outlook for 2013 that we have taken into account with our projections shown here with the dashed blue and red lines. Most of the vendors in the benchmark study issued their 2013 guidance during the last calendar quarter of 2012 a topic area that we will also discuss in more detail at the end of the presentation today. And the general consensus at the time suggested that 2013 would again be a difficult year for most of the firms in the benchmark study. And with that, I'd like to move to the next slide. Most, as in fact, as we mentioned on the previous slide, 16 of the 20 firms in the benchmark study reported a year-to-year -year contraction in their respective revenue for 4Q12. Top-line contraction ranged from so low single-digit to low double-digit rates of sales declines. And the primary market factors cited by vendors across the board for the, 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 the growth headwinds that they faced included the budget pandemonium as manifested in the ongoing series of continuing resolutions and the ever-looming threat of sequestration, which, of course, has since become a reality continued reductions in new IT outlays at the federal level, as well as in the state and local spaces, and the ongoing ramp down of operations in the Iraq and Afghanistan theaters. The second topic area from the benchmark study relates to how vendors are responding to the ongoing challenges in the public sector IT services market, especially the U.S. federal space and in particular through continued portfolio reshaping and diversification of, vertical and geographic, of, of their vertical and geographic market focus. We will also call out the firms that posted leading rates of growth and profitability in this section and show how their actions in response to the market conditions have enabled them to achieve their growth and margin performance. So let me take a moment now to orient you to the, to the graphic on this slide. This is an illustration of the 20 firms in the quarterly benchmark study and how they position against one another in terms of top line growth, margin performance, and the respective size of their revenue bases. This graphic also calls out which firms are growing the fastest and which are doing so most profitably. 
We have excluded two outlying companies this quarter, uh, NCI and General Dynamics ISNT, as each posted large top line contractions <clears throat> and large operating losses that caused their respective graph positions to fall well outside of the general area where their counterparts were positioned. The x-axis represents absolute dollar growth for each of the vendors' public sector IT services business. The y-axis on the graph represents reported or estimated operating margin for each vendor's public sector IT services business. Finally, the size of the bubble for each vendor represents the volume of revenue generated in the quarter through public sector sales. The average year-to-year -year growth rate for the firms, negative 4.7, is also plotted on the vertical dashed red line, while the average operating margin of 9.7 is also plotted with a horizontal red, uh, dashed red line. The aforementioned companies excluded from the graphical representation here were also excluded from the calculation of the averages represented by these lines. The growth leaders shared many of the same drivers for their revenue performance, including investments to expand outside the federal sector into areas such as energy, healthcare IT, which was a key area, we'll see a little bit later on, and even commercial markets where their capabilities in cybersecurity, for example, are in demand in sectors such as financial services, manufacturing, and retail. Government-centric revenue growth leaders have been somewhat buoyed by, the by their acquisition activity for a handful of firms, with the top five firms realizing inorganic growth uh, revenue contributions or closing new acquisitions in the prior quarters. Commercially centric IT services firms growth is largely organic, driven by demand among federal civilian and state and local agencies for enterprise IT, business systems such as SAP, healthcare IT services, and, and niche outsourcing solutions such as document management. IBM, for example, remains a margin leader among commercially centric firms due to its process and delivery efficiency. Across the board with the margin leaders, we saw the continued implementation and execution of cost reduction initiatives, such as improved supply chain management, Raytheon is an example here, or companies that have continued to intensify their focus on strong contract performance and execution. And with that, I'd like to discuss the top three revenue leaders as well as the top three operating margin leaders in greater detail in the next couple of slides. Let me take a moment to orient you to the graphic on this slide, which highlights the, the top three companies in terms of their year-to-year -year growth uh, performance uh, during 4Q12. Of these, SAIC generated the strongest year-to-year -year growth amongst the 20 companies in the benchmark study. However, there is a caveat. In the prior year quarter, 4Q11, SAIC suffered the revocation of a contract and elected to book the full impact during that quarter. As a result of this one-time event, the company's year-to-year -year revenue a year later in the fourth calendar quarter of 2012 was essentially inflated due to this quote-unquote low base effect. So adjusting for this contract loss, what would essentially be SASE's quote-unquote organic top-line performance actually ended up being a, a contraction of 4.2%. However, the company did still report resurgent growth in its defense solution segment, and according to TBR estimates, SCIC's healthcare practice continues to generate double-digit growth, while the company continues to gain traction in commercial verticals such as energy and financial services. Xerox Services, the second leading growth vendor in 4Q12 with an 8% year-to-year top-line expansion rate, continued to enjoy solid demand for healthcare exchange implementation-related services from its base of state government clients seeking to comply with healthcare reform requirements. The firm also continued to leverage new alliances forged earlier during the year with healthcare organizations. For example, Xerox teamed with Health Plan Services, a leading provider of services and technology solutions for the insurance and managed care markets, to assist health insurance carriers in preparing to participate in the health insurance exchange rollout. Conversely, Xerox noted during the quarter that it is experiencing many of the same pricing pressures and delays in decision cycles within its U.S. federal business as many of its commercial and government-centric counterparts, and this somewhat offset its overall public sector growth. 
finally, the third vendor on the slide, Accenture. The, Accenture's public sector practice also continues to leverage momentum in the government healthcare IT space to drive its growth, which according to TBR estimates was 6.5% in 4Q12. We believe that Accenture's combination of healthcare offerings uh, that, that include consulting, technology, and business process outsourcing services are enabling the company to address demand for healthcare management and connected health solutions. Accenture also continues to reposition and restructure its U.S. federal services business, which we believe has helped it to win recent deals with clients such as awards from the U.S. Transportation Security Administration, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, FBI, and the U.S. Navy. So moving to the next slide, I'd like to discuss the operating profitability leaders for 4Q12 and the drivers of their margin performance. First is Harris Corporation, who returned in 4Q12 to the top rank, ranking position in terms of margin performance with a 17.7% operating margin. This was after they took a large one-time charge to their, uh, their P&L in, in the previous quarter, which in turn generated a large operating loss. The company continues to reduce costs through restructuring efforts to offset increased R&D spend, which will eventually generate additional higher margin offerings within its portfolio. It is noteworthy to mention, though, that a large radio-based product component is folded into this operating margin figure, uh, which, generates, which helps to generate the high margin uh, revenue streams for Harris. IBM Global Services leveraged its scale to, to askew lower margin work and has been taking on more profitable engagements in the public sector, leveraging its broad portfolio of cloud, mobility, and cybersecurity solutions. And as a result, we estimate that IBM Global Services' operating margin of 13.1% in 4Q12 was able to position it in line with the number three vendor in, the, in terms of operating margin performance, which was Boeing's uh, Global Services and Solution Group. Boeing GSNS has historically performed well during the fourth calendar quarter due to seasonal factors, and we believe that these seasonal factors are essentially related to the realization of performance milestones on contracts during the fourth calendar quarter of the year. However, during 4Q, the uh, Glo Boeing's Global Services and Solutions Group also cited improved performance on integrated logistics contracts as being one of the other primary drivers of its operating margin, which, as I mentioned a moment ago, was tied with uh, IBM Global Services. With that, I'd like to move to the final key takeaway from our quarterly public sector benchmark study. The final discussion topic from the benchmark study today relates to vendor outlook for the re for 2013. To orient the audience to this slide, here we have illustrated the projected top line growth for the 20 vendors for their full year calendar 2013 revenues. Overall, most vendors have guided for flat to negative growth, negative growth in 2013 over 2012. After reviewing the guidance given by some, though not all, of the vendors for calendar 2013, 15 of the 20 firms that we follow with our, bench, our public sector IT services benchmark either expect or have guided for 2013 sales to decline from 2012. For many, in fact, 2013 will be the third consecutive year that they've suffered contracting sales. Five of the 20 vendors in the benchmark study are projected to see or estimated to have positive top-line growth in 2013, though we acknowledge that financial restatements or other adjustments may change these final results. And we will discuss the drivers behind the expected top-line growth for these companies momentarily. The remaining firms in the study all expect the same conditions that impeded their growth during 2012, and many of these conditions were also present in 2011 including budget uncertainties, lower IT spending, ongoing defense cuts, and the continued drawdown of operations in Iraq and Afghanistan to remain headwinds to their growth for the rest of 2013. So 
So I'd like to take a few moments and discuss some of the factors driving the guidance for firms expecting to see top-line growth in 2013, beginning with Accenture, Xerox Services, and CSC. Accenture plans to target transformative defense-related deals while also expanding public sector engagements in procurement, logistics, and supply chain management. Deal wins in federal health and civilian, civilian sectors, along with wins in public sector overseas markets late in 2012, will also ramp up during the first half of 2013. And furthermore, Accenture also looks to expand its overall defense business in the U.S., as well as in international markets. Xerox Services public sector revenue growth, expected growth in 2013, will continue to be driven by the ramp up of deal wins with state and local governments late in 2012, especially in the healthcare space and with its outsourcing solutions. Xerox has stated that it plans to spend up to $500 million in acquisitions on 2013 to expand its services capabilities across the board, and we believe that this will include investments via acquisitions to expand their operations in the government and health sectors. And finally, CSC, who we believe will continue to focus on providing solutions that will deliver immediate ROI for its clients in the public sector space, as was the case, for example, with its inclusion on the GSA's recent email as a services contract. CSC also landed two large IDIQ wins with the U.S. government in 4Q12 with a combined potential value of $3.4 billion, and we believe the ramp up of these deals will also help the firm to offset weakness in other areas of its federal IT services business. In addition, CSC's health re IT related solutions will continue to be a growth driver in 2013, also helping to offset the aforementioned challenges in the federal space outside of the areas that I just mentioned. The requirement for states to establish health insurance exchanges will provide additional revenue, uh, additional avenues for CSE to engage with clients in the state uh, healthcare space in 2013, and we believe CSE will also continue to gain traction uh, in the payer provider space by providing consulting and applications related solutions to assist them with ICD-10 compliance and the ongoing implementation of electronic health records. So what we've seen with the, the projections for the, uh, the, the vendors on this slide is a common thread of the healthcare IT space being a, a key growth driver, expected growth driver for the, uh, for, for the firms that we've, we've uh, focused on here. And with that, I'd, love, I'd like to move to the next slide where we discuss uh, two additional firms that are expecting to realize growth in 2013, CACI and Mantech. Both CACI and Mantech expect calendar 2013 revenue to be marginally up over 2012, and this is also in part uh, our projections for their, for their calendar uh, 2013 growth. Uh, and these are based on their guidance uh, as, as well as our outlook for, for the overall market. Based on this, we expect both firms to roughly post a marginal increase of about 0.7% in 2013 over 2012. CACI will continue to capture demand in its target growth markets of healthcare, IT, business systems, and cybersecurity solutions, <clears throat> realizing high single to low double digit revenue expansion within these key areas that will offset weakness in, in other areas. We also believe that CACI's acquisitions of, ID, of IDL solutions and emergent technologies do align strongly with its, mar its very market focused growth objectives. We believe these acquisitions also illustrate CICI's focus on the healthcare IT space. And these acquisitions will generate sufficient inorganic growth to offset the headwinds that CICI has acknowledged that it is experiencing within its core federal market. Moving to Mantech, we, we saw that their guidance, their positive guidance, uh, as being somewhat of a surprise given the, uh, the revenue contraction that Mantech suffered over the last several quarters. We believe that a suite of task orders that were delayed during 4Q12 were pushed through to early 2013, essentially giving the firm a head start in reaching its goals for the upcoming year. The acquisition of Alta Systems early in 2013 will provide the firm with additional systems design and analytics capabilities, as well as providing Mantech with a position on the Center for Medicaid and Medicare's $4 billion enterprise systems development contract, creating an opportunity for increased task orders 
in Mantec's healthcare IT services business through 2018. So with that, we believe that Mantec is positioned to reach its guidance, given that the majority of its guidance, about 92% is from current business, and about 65% of its projected revenues reside in funded backlog. Finally, we believe Mantec does remain committed to expanding its healthcare IT services footprint, as indicated by the aforementioned acquisition of Alta Systems, which occurred earlier this year. Lastly, I'd like to make a few additional comments about the outlook for 2013 and the areas we see vendors targeting for growth. So the question is, aside from operational enhancement, you know, what will be the focus for vendors in, in terms of growth? And will there be any pockets of growth and new opportunity to, to, uh, for vendors to pursue in 2013? Now, while the total IT budget request for fiscal 2013 was down from 2012, we see the decline, or a decline, I should say, will be primarily on the defense side. The IT spending request among major federal civilian agencies was about 1.1% higher than that of fiscal 12, with double-digit growth in the budget request for departments including education and treasury. Other departments including agriculture, HHS, transportation, and veterans affairs are also expected to moderately increase their IT spend in 2013. So TBR sees vendors focusing on mining new or increased business in the following areas. For example, in big data, there have been recent studies that have shown that only 5 to 10 percent of the federal workforce is poised to handle large data sets, with less than 20 percent of federal IT managers having the requisite skills to, to work with large data sets, thereby creating the opportunity to, for vendors to provide guidance to federal IT personnel and provide them with the roadmap to implementing big data solutions. Data center consolidation will continue to be a growth area in 2013 as, as agencies and departments pursue uh, the federal data center consolidation initiative goal of closing 40 percent of the federal government's data centers by 2015. A recent survey of federal IT managers also indicated that about half will prioritize the management of mobile devices in 2013 with ensuring the security of these devices being a top initial priority as well. In terms of cybersecurity, we project that federal cybersecurity spending will sustain a 6 to 7 percent compounded annual growth rate through 2018, outstripping the overall pace of federal IT spending growth at least for the next two to three years. On the cloud side, while the adoption of cloud technologies by the federal government is still essentially in the development phase for many agencies. These agencies and departments are increasingly using a variety of cloud-based services such as conferencing and collaboration, messaging, and other business process applications. However, security remains the chief concern for nearly all federal IT managers, driving the increased amenability agencies have towards private cloud solutions. And finally, <clears throat> We have noted the actions of numerous vendors in the benchmark study to expand their footprint and capabilities in the health IT space, both in the U.S. and abroad, in and of itself illustrating the, opp the opportunities that are perceived by these vendors. And during 2013, we see no lessening of this trend. In fact, we see an acceleration of investment in the healthcare IT space. So with that, I'd like to make some concluding remarks about the, the direction that our public sector IT services practice uh, will take in 2013. During this upcoming year, we will continue to, to report on drivers of revenue growth and margin performance, strategic actions taken by the firms that we follow to adjust to the market conditions, how these firms are leveraging alliances and acquisitions, how these companies are managing their human resources, and what new segments are being targeted for growth. We are also considering additional research programs in areas such as cloud computing, cybersecurity, as well as opportunities for U.S.-based vendors to expand their public sector activities in international markets as well as in, to expand their capabilities in the commercial space. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us today, and I'd like to open the floor for questions. Great. Uh, as John mentioned, now is the time to send through any questions that you do have. Had a couple come through already. Uh, John, the first question we have is, you mentioned vendors expanding into international markets. Can you provide me with some examples? Yes. Thanks for the question. 
many of the, the contractors that, that we follow uh, have intensified their pursuit of international business to obviously to offset uh, the constraints that they're facing uh, primarily in the U.S. federal space. Um, I'll cite some examples, uh, Raytheon expanding in Saudi Arabia, uh, Northrop Grumman expanding in Australia and Brazil. Uh, we're seeing a lot of activity overall in Australia, uh, from not just Northrop Grumman, but Lockheed Martin as well. Um, Booz Allen Hamilton uh, looking at ex expanding in uh, G7 countries in the Middle East. And all of these companies have either captured um, significant engagements or begun to ramp up operation in key international growth markets. Okay, uh, the next question we had to come through. Uh, do you have any indications as to how the federal IT market will look in 2014? Well, we haven't received any specific guidance at this point. It's, it's, it would be atypical of the companies that we follow to provide that at this point during the year. Uh, however, we do, we have seen that the proposed, for example, the, the, uh, the recently proposed 2014 federal IT budget indicates that federal IT spending would actually increase about 2% to around $82 billion versus uh, the, uh, the, the previous year levels. We do expect the, the spending priorities to be, to be similar to the uh, fiscal 13 budget, cybersecurity, innovation, data center consolidation, you know, all of these things done with the overall goal of enhancing efficiencies in and through uh, information technology. Uh, one of the things I'd like to also note is that the, one of the largest increases in IT spend uh, is expected to be within the budget request uh, by the Department of Veteran Affairs, which is proposing spending of about $3.7 billion on IT projects, uh, including $155 million on the uh, Veterans Benefits Management System. However, it, it does uh, also appear that more than half of the budget request will be earmarked for operating and maintaining existing services and uh, systems, I should say, and infrastructure. Okay. Uh, so we have one more question come through. Uh, what do you see happening around the development and introduction of new services and solutions? Thanks for the question. During the, uh, the fourth calendar quarter of 2012, we, we observed a a number of the firms that we follow expanding their offerings in a few areas, most notably mobility, uh, big data, and analytics, which are kind of intertwined, uh, as well as cybersecurity. And I'd, I'd like to call out a couple of examples here. Uh, first of all, Raytheon introduced uh, its OneForce mobile collaboration solution, which is its uh, mobile application designed for first responders. Uh, and the application solution provides uh, specialized communication and collaboration capabilities. Uh, next, um, I'd like to call out SEIC, who introduced their Critical Insight solution, which is a big data and analytics solution for clients in the energy, healthcare, financial services, uh, as well as uh, public sector verticals. Um, Dell Services expanded its Incident Response Services suite of uh, security services, which includes its solutions uh, such as advanced threat preparedness assessments, uh, denial of services prepared, preparedness assessments, and advanced threat uh, tabletop exercises, which all of which help clients to prepare for and detect incoming cybersecurity threats. And then finally, I'll, I'll call out um, Booz Allen Hamilton, who introduced its uh, Cyber Force, Foresight Threat Intelligence Services, which identifies and strengthens weaknesses within its the client's cyber security uh, profile and couples this with uh, continuous monitoring of cyber intrusion and uh, as well as mitigation of those intrusion attempts. Thanks. Uh, it doesn't look like we had any other questions come through. So with that, uh, I'm going to start to wrap things up. So thank you, John, uh, for the presentation. And thanks to those of you that did send through questions. Uh, as promised, here are all the social media links that I mentioned. We encourage you to follow uh, John, Sebastian, as well as TBR on Twitter. And you can find all of the presentations and webinar decks on YouTube and SlideShare, and the URLs are listed here for you guys to go check that out. Um, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, what I'm going to do is leave the chat function open for another couple of minutes in case anyone has any last-minute follow-up action items or like uh, any further questions or set up conversations with John. And if we don't hear from you this quarter, we look forward to speaking with you guys all again next quarter. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much.